So this is episode four of Social Leverage. And if you were lucky enough to join us last week, I completely forgot to record at least 15 minutes of it. So we're officially starting the fourth episode and we've stuck with it since through June. So that's fun. Um, if you're new and just joining us, the way we kind of do this is Rob and I go back and forth and banter about the things we know about the various apps we talk about, which today is Snapchat. And then if you have questions, pop it down in the chat thingy over there and we'll answer them. Well, we typically kind of answer them as we go along because it helps create a discussion. If you want to do the talking thing, and unlock that seat, then you can do that too if you want at your own risk. So, Snapchat. Yeah, you know, Snapchat, you know, when I signed on to it last year, it was one of those things where people would say, it's all for the teenagers to send, you know, bad photos back and forth. And, um, and I thought, you know, that's not that, I'm sure it happens. But it can't be, you know, it can't be as bad as they say. You know, and I've never received any of those, so I, I don't know what they're talking about. But, yeah. you know, I I use Snapchat as a behind-the-scenes social media so that, you know, my fans, friends, and followers can see something different of me that I'm not posting somewhere else. Right. And so what you have is a network where – after a while, the pictures that you post, the videos that you post will disappear. So I think that they're on there for, what, 24 hours? And then once you watch them, you have a replay, and then that's it. That's done. You can't see them again. Now, you can um, screenshot someone's uh, pictures. But here's the thing. When you're using Snapchat or any other social media, Try to get people to engage what you're doing. You know, one of my clients, he prefers Snapchat over any other social media network because he can. What get type people. of client is that? Because you work with a niche that doesn't that you wouldn't in, like necessarily think that Snapchat would work for. So. Well, this this is a doctor, a weight loss doctor, and you know you would think that most doctors, he at least you know doctors in the United States. They don't embrace social media the way they're supposed to. In fact, most of them are Vulcans because they're non-emotional. They don't want to get attached to their clients. Social media or Snapchat in particular allows you to be human. It allows you to you know, get a connection with your patients, clients, friends, family that you didn't have in other networks. Um, so what he does is you know he'll ask people if you have a question send me a, a video you know and and the interaction he gets between his his patients is unbelievable you know yeah you might only have 10 seconds to record a question but it's quick and then he'll reply you know and he'll send it back and you have a dialogue now going back and forth so that's what you can do with snapchat to make your engagement with your followers so much better. You know, it's it's not just about sharing pictures. I mean, I share pictures a lot from, you know, my little local community here, but I also express videos where I, I express my opinions through video. And that gets people to say, hey, you know, that Rob guy is pretty interesting, or he's, you know, he's a jerk, or he's he's this, or he's that, or I didn't know he liked ice cream. And it gives you a better understanding of who we did, you know, who I am, what I do, how I do it than if it's just a static image on Instagram or Pinterest. And I think the biggest question, so when I first heard about the app way back when it came out, I think it, it's had like waves where like it kind of dies down and then people start talking about it and it's all a buzz again. And so when it first came out, my, my first thought was just like really another app to post, you know, photos, like how is this different? So I think, the biggest question that I hear a lot that I've had a lot is about the app itself is just, am I wasting my time? And you hear things from all sorts, the entire spectrum of 
people like you, people like um, uh, John Lee Dumas, people like Gary Vaynerchuk, and they're like, oh my gosh, go all in with Snapchat. This is the place to be. This is this is where you need to be as a business owner or you're going to just miss out completely. And then there are people who are just like, this is a complete waste of my time. I'm not doing it. I don't care about this app and I get, you know, all my clients from, you know, this medium and this is how I'm going to do it and this is how it works. So, uh, what would you say to the business owner who just completely resists it or is wanting to dip their toe into it but doesn't know how to, you know, doesn't feel, I don't know the right word, but just doesn't feel right or productive well, using it? Most, most of my clients, I think, are either one, they've tried social media and they just don't get it, or they look at social media as one of those intangible things that is going to take up their time um, or it requires too much of their time to get their message out there. You know, this is not the old, you know, old times where you open a phone book and you see a, a message or you see an advertisement and you think, wow, okay, let me try them. This is you now being real with your audience in a way that goes beyond any other marketing message out there. You know, so if you're driving, and you see a billboard, that's one thing. But you have to look at the, the new style billboards are doing, you know, they're, they're doing little clips on interactive billboards. So you're considering now Snapchat is that interactive billboard and you're driving by and seeing what people are saying. And it's great because now instead of just posting a picture, you can actually post a long story and you know you get your phone you know i have mine right here and you can you can record 10 second clips and what i i posted the other day on my facebook was a video that i actually made through my snapchat and i took you know eight or nine clips that i made into one long i think it ended up being a minute long video and i explained to people how they can now record their sequence in an easy, uh, non-stressful, non-frustrating way and get it out there on Snapchat, you know, and now people are seeing your sequence, you know, that whether you recorded three snaps all at once or 10 or 12, it doesn't matter. Now your story is one long story that they can follow without having to wait for you to upload the next one. So, it's just another way for you to build that trust with somebody. Yeah. Definitely. And not, not, not everybody is going to be on Snapchat. Not everybody is going to be on Instagram or, or Facebook. And that's, that's the thing about um, social media is that you have to understand your audience. Okay. Not everybody is going to be where you think they're going to be. So, I mean, I like Snapchat. I don't like Twitter. You know, I like Facebook. I like, Instagram. I'm not so keen on Pinterest. So I have my favorites, but so does everybody else. So you kind of have to kind of cater the message that you have to the audience that is on that particular network. And I think that's definitely a key point too, catering your message to the audience. Um, we've gotten into this space where we really want to save time as business owners. And that's important. You know, we have 24 hours in a day and typically between eight to 12 of those hours are, you know, working hours where you're the most productive. I mean, some people can work through the night and that's fine. And some people can't, you know, whatever your schedule is, but we all have a specific amount of time to work on our businesses, including the marketing. And that includes, you know, where should you be on social media, which platform should you use? And we've gotten into this mode of, I'm just going to put the same thing up on Twitter that I put on Instagram, that I put on Facebook, that I put on Pinterest and LinkedIn, blah, 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 all those different sites. And there are even more niche sites. And I think the thing about apps like Blab, apps like Periscope, apps like live streaming and things like Snapchat, where it has to be in the moment, is that it breaks people away from this constantly 
editing what goes out. Like, this is live. There's no, I mean, unless you're going to be listening to the recording later when it goes out, this is happening real time. We can't just put a filter on it or edit it or make the story seem prettier than it is, etc. Like, you're getting real time and you're not getting it across every channel. I mean, I, I've tweeted it out a couple times, Rob's posted on Facebook a few times, but you're not getting the same content everywhere and that burns people out. And especially when you think about like, like if you were to go to a networking event and there was a networking event on business, but then also there's a just sort of kind of hangout party, you're not gonna bring the same vibe to both parties. You know, and so that's, that's, I think that's a hard distinction on social media that people forget that you don't bring the same vibe and energy to every party. You bring your same authentic message, but you tailor it to who you're talking to because the people on Twitter, the people on Facebook, on Snapchat, they're different types of people. It's not the same person. I mean, you have crossovers, but it's not the same people. And so I think that's a really important point to hone in on for sure. And I think, I think that's a big appeal of Snapchat is that it's so in the moment. I mean, there are filters, there are like playful things to make it all look better. But for the most part, it's this is what I'm doing in the moment. You know, and the nice thing about Snapchat is that when you get a new follower, you can create a simple customized video just for them, welcoming them to not only Snapchat, but to your followers. And now what you're doing is you're, you're saying, hey, you're not trying to pitch them anything. You're just saying, hey, I'm here if you need me. Uh, you know, and you can introduce yourself. And I've done that with almost every single person who subscribed to my Snapchat. And it's just, it takes just a few seconds. And you have these people now that are replying back to you, hey, that was the greatest thing. You know, I love it. You know, they're giving you a thumbs up or they're, they're doing this. Or you're doing, you really can't do that with Facebook. You have way too many people coming into your Facebook network that you can never give them a personalized video message with Snapchat. You can do that and it makes your life so much easier. And usually once a week I'll do a, I'll do a personal, I'll do a, a, a message. It's not personalized, but then I'll send it out to a few select people, you know, and, you know, just saying, hey, how's your week going? You know, and, and they lo just love it. They, 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 they like that personal attention that you're giving to them. And so the, and yeah. And one thing that I think is hard to, it's hard to get across because as business, as business owners, we want to make sure that we're not wasting time, but we also don't want to miss opportunity. And so we tend to forget how valuable a personal one-on-one -on -one connection is because it's, it's, it's relatively easy to talk to a group of people. It's a very generic way to get your message out. It's the way we've kind of always gotten messages out. And it seems like Snapchat is one of the few platforms that has made it that level of personal like you actually feel like okay this is very personalized we're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation and they've done it in a way that it's a social app and you can send it to many people but it's also almost like a texting app too and so it's something people are used to and they don't have to retrain themselves like you get on facebook if you're new to facebook and you're just like what do i even do what group do i join how do i join a group how do i make a page or you get onto instagram and you're just like who do i even follow and how do i get followers and all this stuff where it's just snapchat is that one-to-one -one connection mm -hmm. you know and what makes you know snapchat so much better i think is it's a combination of of messenger and it's a combination of your social network and then it's a combination of, of you know adding these these gifs and these these pictures and these other elements to make your life and and your recipients life so much better you know when it comes to advertising on that it's a little different than you know running Facebook ads or doing this or doing that you know what we what <coughs> excuse me what they have on Snapchat is called geo filters. And you can actually create these geo filters 
So if you're going to an event that you maybe you're speaking at, maybe you're maybe you're attending and you want to create this filter, you can actually have it set up around this conference that you're going to. So maybe it's a hotel, maybe it's a you know it's a it's an amusement park, maybe it's it's you know, maybe it's a whole town. You know, we set up one for a client that was just a particular hotel conference center. And I think it cost them $50 for three days. Now, that was based on the size. I've heard some people say that they forgot to adjust the size and they ended up spending $1,000. So you really have to hone in on the size that you want to keep your price down. But the geo filters, it can have a hashtag, but it can't have a website. It can, uh, you know, it can have some graphics, but it can't have direct, you know, your direct logo. But here's the thing about the geo filters is that, you know, he trained a lot of the people that were going to this event to start taking snaps with this geo filter. And he was getting all the credit because he designed this, this geo filter. So this geo filter cost him 50 bucks, but he ended up getting almost $40,000 in sales from this three day event on this $50 geo filter. So it's something to think about because they have potential to make you some money. Now, one question I have that I've heard because in terms of like growing a Snapchat following and I was doing some research yesterday about the app itself and sort of the lingo and we'll talk about that later because that's a whole other thing, but for somebody who's just getting started in business, they might not really have a big Facebook following. They might have a mediocre Twitter following, whatever it is. What is the benefit in joining Snapchat if, and it's also very hard to sort of share your direct Snap link because it's only a mobile app and you can't really access a profile online even to follow. Like on Instagram, you can still find somebody's profile online and you can still follow them from, from the computer and all that stuff and on Twitter, of course. So what is this an app that should, that should be used by a more established business owner or can just somebody who's just starting out in business just dive in and be like, all right, I'm just going to, you know, see what this does. Well, I think any business can use Snapchat. Now, there are things that you can do to maximize your potential using it. Now, I find that most of my clients that I deal with, you know, do business with are all over the United States. They're all over the world. Now, if you're more of a local company, say carpet cleaning, because that, that was a, in the industry that I was in for 20 years prior to being a consultant, being an author, being a writer, is that you're on a localized uh, economy. And most of those people may not be using Snapchat. You know, most of them may not even be using Instagram or Pinterest. So, you know, a localized, you know, business that's just starting out may only be using Facebook or Twitter because that's what they know. That's where the masses are. And until they start getting comfortable using those items, and and honestly, most of the people in a uh, service type industry have a hard time using social media at all because they're so busy trying to run their business that they forget that they need to go out there and and be the voice, be the the image, be the you know the 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 face of this business. And in order to do that, they have to to you know, make videos and, and write blogs and, and, and do posts and create content. And, you know, for them, Snapchat, the live video on Blab or Pinterest, you know, uh, Periscope may not be something that is going to be beneficial for them right off the bat. Now, once they get more established in their business, I would say, yes, dive in because now people already know you. They know what to expect. They know that Hey, you know, every week he's going to get on Blab and he's going to make these videos and, you know, he's going to share that then on, you know, what he's learned on, on uh, Snapchat. Now, if you are a local service, what I would suggest, though, is using Snapchat, use the pictures, use the, the picture element. So take your pictures and you can create 
overlays and, or create uh, other images using the app. You can even create videos. But you, you know, you can post them on your storyline. But I always download them to my phone and then share them through Facebook or share them through Twitter and get people uh, to learn that you are on Snapchat so that they can follow you live or follow you more in tune you know, on Snapchat versus the other networks. And so what do you tell, so you, you've you gained, I think last time we talked, like three clients from Snapchat in the you know lawyer doctor space. And so people are probably thinking like, wait, how does that work? Um, so can you talk about that? Uh, I think a lot of people would be interested and I can probably guess at how that connection happened, but for people who probably would not understand that aspect, how, how did that work out? You know, most doctors are afraid of social media. They're afraid of Snapchat. They're afraid of, you know, putting their, their face out there. And I told them, you don't have to worry about that. You know, take pictures of your waiting room. Take pictures of, you know, what's going on in the hospital. You don't have to violate the HIPAA laws. You know, but people need to know that when they come into your hospital, it's going to be a comfortable atmosphere for them. You know, the view, you know, looking out windows, the the parking lot. The, and, and you know, one doctor is like, oh, OK, this is easier than I thought. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once he started learning, you know, or not learning, but seeing what I was doing, uh, it made it so much easier for him to do it. Now, lawyers are a little different because, you know, um, we're going back to the whole Vulcan school of, of no emotion. Mm -hmm. You know, they spent 12 years, 15 years, you know, of their life going and studying on how not to be human, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm not saying that, you know, a lot of my, some of my lawyers now are are really starting to embrace the live video. And, um, you know, I, I think once you start getting into Snapchat, you're going to find it so much easier to use than the other social networks. But here's the thing is that, you have to be one who is willing to put your face out there. Okay. A lot of whether whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a doctor, whether you're, you know, a cleaner, whether you're, you know, a social media person, you have to be willing to take some action. Yeah. And, you know, I think Snapchat is one of those things that helps you create action. You know, it, it may not be the ideal image that you're putting out there all the time. But, you know, for doctors and lawyers, people need to see their human side. They need to see that, you know, when they're not, you know, in the courtroom or when they're not in the operating room, they're human. You know, they, they go to a swimming pool. They, they play tennis. They, they, they go hiking. They're just like you and I. And that's what Snapchat does. It makes you more human. Yeah, and, and that's you the know, goal. Like that's the goal of so many social media platforms. But we get so um, obsessed with sort of the contest that social media can seem like or become. Like you know, this person got this many likes. That person had the perfect Instagram filter for their you know their whatever, and and they had the perfect cutest little setup with their coffee mug and 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 computer. And I can just I'll, I'll never be able to take a photo like that ever. And so these apps that allow the little look, um, looking into who is this person without all that, you know, or, and that's, I think that's what in, intrigues people. I mean, that's what makes reality TV so popular. Um, we'll ignore the fact that it's not actually really reality, <laughs> but that's what makes it popular in terms of people just want to know what other people do in their day-to-day -day life. They want to feel like, you struggle with the same thing I struggle with, even though you seem to have it all. You have all the doctor and lawyer clients, and that seems so glamorous, but you're just a business owner like I am. And so that, I think, is a really big factor that a lot of people forget um, and sort of discount, that you don't always have to show such a perfect image. You just need to show an authentic image. Mm -hmm. Authenticity right now is the big thing. And that makes people want to trust you more. You know, forget all these. If you've ever, if you ever saw a TV ad or, you know, you open the phone book 
and you see these monstrous ads for these lawyers that, you know, you look at the ad and think, I can't afford them because, you know, their, their, their picture is plastered all over everything. Snapchat makes you human enough that people are like, wow. You know, I, I I don't care if he has a big ad because that doesn't matter. I, I want him to be represent me or I want him to operate on me because, you know, he seems trustworthy. And that's what Snapchat does. Relatability, for sure. And you, there's so many people who don't seem approachable because they seem so big. And then you see them on an app or a live stream and you're just like, oh, you know, I could I could walk up to them and just be like, hey, you know, what's up? What's going on? Let's start a dialogue. And so it definitely it makes everything more approachable for sure. So there's a lot of little lingo things on Snapchat, which are weird. And I was looking at this website and I'll see if I can find the link. Um, I forget what it was called. Let me see if I can drop it in. Um, here it is. Um, Snapchat emoji link lingo because they're heavy into the usage of um, emojis and all this stuff and that's a big part of the app it's like it, it's trying to make you feel closer to people so it's like if you send so many snaps to so and so then they'll get like a smiley face or whatever and they'll be a best friend and you know there's a there's a up and down side to that because it can almost make you feel like you're connected to somebody who you don't actually really know. But at the same time, it's trying to balance that making a connection with other people in a way that we relate to. So it's a hard to be like, well, I'm friends with Rob and but really we're just acquaintances like that's not a normal way to communicate so the whole friends thing the whole best friend whatever the lingo is on there it definitely adds another layer on top of all that of relatability the same with like facebook like i talk all the time with people and it's just like i don't really know if that person's a friend or if i should refer to them as an acquaintance but facebook's just made it easy and been like okay you're friends with these people or on twitter it's followers you're followers with these people so what are you going to call in? No, that was me. I pressed the wrong button. Oh. We're still trying to figure Blab out. Can you tell? That's fun. <laughs> um, so, yeah. What else about Snapchat? With Snapchat, you have different ways of uh, bringing in your fans, friends, and followers. You either have a Snap code. Uh, you can either add them directly with your with their name, their username, or you can use a link. Uh, with mine, it's you know, Snapchat.com backslash add backslash and my name Rob Onspot. and it's very easy because you know. But that link only works on mobile phones. So you know, if you're going to use the link, that'll take you right to my profile, and then you know you're added right to my friends list. You know, I usually give people the three options because, you know, they may not always have, um, you know, their 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 phone app open, but you know, they can say, oh, okay, Rob's Rob's on Facebook or on Snapchat. Let me add him. You know, or you know, you just take your phone and 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 click it and save the picture, and it'll automatically add it. You know, the scan code in. You know, so there's there's different ways. I always like giving people the, the link as well as the scan code just so that they know how they can reach me. Yeah. And, and how do you balance sort of the time on Snapchat versus other social media apps? So is there a way that you've been sort of like, I'm going to spend X amount of time in this app, or is it just sort of random whenever, spontaneous? The nice thing about Snapchat is that, you know, the followers will look at your content when they have time. So it's, it's when, I, when I schedule my Snapchat time, it's more random. But usually I'll jump in in the morning and, and I'll give a, you know, a little video. And then, you know, I I'll, I'll might post some pictures or do something the rest of the day. So maybe during the day you got 10 things from me. Well, when people are scrolling through their, their Snapchat, you know, if they don't want to see what I have to say, they can just click it off and go to the next person. 
you know, but Snapchat will, will automatically continue to feed what you have from your friends into that, that um, kind of a, a sequence. The feed. Right. But, you know, here's the thing is that with Facebook, with Twitter, with LinkedIn, with Google+, Plus, you can schedule all that. You can't schedule stuff on Snapchat. Right. There's just no API that will allow you to do that right now. And it, it may never be. It's not necessarily a good idea because it just, it, it takes away from the entire point of in the moment. And that's what, that's what that app's about. That's what Blab's about. That's what live stream's about. That's what some, there's not everything, not everything needs to be scheduled. That's the entire point. And I think that's why a lot of these apps have gone viral because it's real time. You get to feel like you're there with the person, you know, for 10 seconds or however long it is. You know, the, the, the only drawback I think right now is that, you know, with Facebook or with Twitter, when someone replies, they get some type of idea of what they're replying to. Sometimes with Snapchat, you know, if you have a lot of people sending you snaps back and forth, you may forget what they're replying to. And, Disappears. That's an interesting right. thing. So I read an article, actually, um, and it was talking about how Snapchat saves all the information in some sort of cloud system, and it doesn't it does not just disappear like they say it does. So that's that's one thing to keep in mind. Like, not that you're going to be using it for anything nefarious, but I don't think that it just disappears. The content is always there. And apparently there have been claims to um, that they've been using it for advertising and all this stuff. So, you know, obviously read the terms and services or at least be aware that they're there at some point. But in this, hello, we're talking about Snapchat. So if you have any questions about that app or anything you'd like to share about it, then let us know. Or be quiet. <laughs> You know, and, and I kind of lost my train of thought because, uh, yeah. you know. Um, but here's the thing about Snapchat. At least I was going somewhere before I got distracted. Um, let me go ahead and go back to my notes here because I'm actually in my Snapchat app right now. And um, I'm going through. They, they, you know, I can actually go to my friend's you know, select a, select a few friends that I want to see what's going on in their world. And, um, you know, just kind of glance at what they're doing. You know, and then I can reply back. But, you know, what's nice about Snapchat is that if I don't want to make a video, if I don't want to make a, you know, send a picture, I can just use it as a regular instant messaging, which is great. And it makes, you know, communicating so much faster. Yeah, definitely. And... Um, you reach a generation too that's younger and that can be helpful you know since I mean obviously a lot of people are migrating to that app that are older but you can also reach a different demographic I know that a lot of times people get um, caught up like I serve this specific demographic but you never know like uh, we I actually have a connection on social media and she serves the boomer crowd but it's a lot of her crowd is latina or latino and they and that's her main like the boomer like 50 and up that's her crowd but she started getting on vine and snapchat and some of these other more millennial seeming apps and there's a lot of folks there that she can reach and the message her message can still speak and cover the different generational gaps. Like if if you're, um, whether you're a doctor or whatever, or technology space or, you know, serving boomers, typically your message can cover a lot of different people. And um, it doesn't stop you from 
using these other apps because you might find out that there's another demographic that could really use your help and your expertise. And you would never have known that if you didn't at least venture out and give it a shot. I mean, it doesn't mean you could go onto Snapchat, create a profile, get some interaction going, and then a week later just decide, no, this isn't for me, leave and go back to what you're doing. But I mean, at least you have the option, at least give it a shot and see how you could make it work. And I think that's the thing about any social media app. You know, Rob isn't on Twitter much. I like it. It's a great place for somebody in the technology space or, you know, anybody who is really interested in keeping up with, you know, Silicon Valley or what's happening in the tech industry and all that stuff. Like, find your flow with social media and stick to it, but don't don't let it constrict you and lose opportunity because you're only doing what's worked all the time. You know, what's cool about Snapchat is that if someone takes, you know, a screenshot of your snap, you know, through their smartphone, Snapchat will tell you, they'll alert you, which is nice because now you can send that person back, you know, their, whether a video message or a text message and say, hey, thanks for, you know, taking a, a, a screenshot. Is there anything else I can help you with? And it gives them, you know, an idea that, hey, you know, you're very interested in them and they're maybe they're interested in that particular message and that's why they screenshot it. You know, or maybe you put a link up and it didn't give them enough time to, you know, uh, quickly write it down. And, you know, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll share, you know, uh, a couple days prior to like the show or, you know, a video I'm working on or, you know, a, a, uh, an article that I wrote and I'll share the link. And people will not always get enough chance or enough time to read it because they're only given like 10 seconds. Right. So, you know, if they screenshot it or if you tell them to screenshot it, you know, the chances of them now seeing that link are going to increase. And then to reply back to them, hey, you know, I saw you screenshot it. You know, here's the link again if you need it. Right. You know, and now they are more enticed or more engaged with you. And the chances of them of, of sticking around your snaps are going to increase yeah. plus the chances of them, you know, buying from you or becoming a client of yours increases because you're reaching out to them. Mm -hmm. And you know, another thing too is a little bit like Instagram, Snapchat doesn't really allow you to drop links and all that type of stuff. Like you, it, it doesn't make it easy for you to direct people to websites and all that stuff. It's a very in app experience. But the thing about that is you have your name in front of these people and somebody can easily Google you. Somebody can easily look you up on Facebook or Twitter or wherever. And you can remind them like, hey, guys, you know, if you want to start more of a dialogue, you know, I have this Facebook group or I, I'm on Twitter a lot. Or, you know, if you want to take something further, invite people who are interested in you to take it further. What, what, whether that's through email, through a different social medium, through their what through your website, whatever it is, because that's how you expand the conversation and you take that relationship from, oh, we're just Snapchat friends to, hey, maybe we can collaborate. Maybe we can talk. I mean, that's kind of how Rob and I met. I mean, we haven't like officially met in person, but we've done a lot of work together. Uh, we've created a course together. We do, we help blog with each other. We now have this social media show and pretty much all of it is because we were, we just happened to be in the same social media group. We reached out to each other. We we're like, Hey, you know, we have a lot of similar thoughts when it comes to social media and, and that just worked. And so you never know who's watching you. You never know who's, uh, getting inspiration from you or, and you never know whether somebody could become a client or a partner, or you could do like a one-off uh, program with them. You just never know. And so all these different apps just give you extra room to connect with people. And that's the bottom line, no matter what social platform you use, it's about connecting with people at a human level. And we forget to do that sometimes because we get all caught up in, I need clients. I need, you know, I need to get you know, people's attention for this and that. You know, and for you guys, if you want to take this off of Blab, you know, from watching us and you want to come to our, our social leverage uh, Facebook group, 
you know, Devani can share that link. I, I think uh, uh, Ronak just uh, joined and, and uh, I, I brought him in. Uh, he actually requested to join and I, I, I accepted. Um, you're always welcome to ask more questions. And, and with every week, we always, you know, we record the show. We put it up on our respective channels, whether it be, you know, my webpage or my YouTube, Devani's webpage, or YouTube. We, we share it to the social leverage group page so that you guys can go back, rewind, look at past episodes, you know, say, hey, you know what? That rap guy, he was just dumb. You know, he didn't know what he was talking about in that episode. But that's okay. That, that you know, we can make fun of each other. We can make fun of you. You can make fun of us. You know, that's what social media is all about. So. Definitely. It's just a relaxed experience. And, and you know, we'd love to hear from you guys, too. Like, what are you working on? What are your struggles? What what have you succeeded in this week? Wins? All that type of stuff. I mean, it's, it doesn't always have to be like us teaching you stuff. Like, you, I'm sure, have vast amounts of wisdom in your own business and things that have worked and not worked for you. And we just, we'd love to hear that and continue that conversation. And I put the link to the group over there in the chat. And if you're listening to this via recording, it's going to be in the little art, uh, article-y blurb that I always put under the video. So, yeah. You know, it was I think it was, what, last year? Uh, you actually read my my share book, which is a, a book I wrote three years ago. Wow, it's been that long. And, um, you know, some of the stuff in there, well, most of it is, is evergreen when it comes to social media. There's a few points now that have been outdated, and I probably should update the book. But, you know, Snapchat wasn't even around then, you know, when I wrote that book. So, you know, a lot of technology is changing, you know, and a lot of the social networks are uh, trying to improve themselves. I mean, Facebook just came out with a, uh, a scannable uh, picture that is a very resemblance of, of what uh, Snapchat uses to get people into your you know, user base. So I think Facebook is going to start mimicking a lot of what snapchat does yeah facebook's getting pretty hip these days they live streaming groups like they're really and they have and another thing too is like you don't have to completely jump ship from facebook there's still a billion users and counting you know i mean it's not a place to just abandon or for old people i mean it's so don't think that oh now i have to completely do a 360 and spend all my time on Snapchat and figure that game out. So you don't have to do that at all. Yeah, old people, I thank you. I wouldn't think you. <laughs> I'm on Facebook all the time and I'm not old. No, but I am. All right, so um, do you guys have any questions? I noticed that one person said that the, you know they started using Snapchat um, and their experience so far has been interesting. And, and you know, it is interesting because there's going to be people on Snapchat, just like Facebook or Twitter, that try to take advantage of what I call the score. And, you know, when, when your name is up there, there's always a number beside it. Don't be con too concerned with the score. Some try to manipulate it. And, and what I've been getting lately is when I accept a, a person as a follower, um, you know, I'll monitor what they do. And the reason I do that is because, you know, if I, if I accept them as a, as a follower and the next, you know, couple snaps I get from them are black screens, that indicates that they're using a program to up their score. So I just go in and delete them because I want legitimate, authentic people following me that are going to, really want my message and not trying to manipulate Snapchat because of a score. Uh, she just asked, uh, is, I hope I'm saying your name right, Rashim? Rashim, okay, I hope I said that right. I'm sorry if I slaughtered it. But she asked, how do you get your audience to follow you over to Snapchat? Well, you can uh, you know, share the link, uh, share your image, you know, your Snap code on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, you can you know, put it on business cards, you can put it on postcards, you can you know, if people still use business cards and postcards, you know, that's kind of passe over the last few years. Um, but just you're, you're marketing just like everything else. You know, just how you tell people how to follow you on Facebook, 
you want to tell people, hey, join me over in Snapchat. Yeah, and snap code is your name. So you're sort of like on Twitter, it's called your handle, or on Facebook, your username. Well, so snap code is your name, and it's a little yeah. square with that picture, and people can scan it and immediately follow you. You yeah, can also give people your at handle, so whatever your name is, at raw, whatever it is, you can you can send that to them, and they can look you up manually. So I'm not sure if I have a picture of my snap uh, in my. I got like a thousand pictures in here. I'm never going to find it. Uh, there, in fact, I just did. If you can see that. Uh, let's go over here. That's what it looks like. So that's a snap code. And um, Facebook and face you just mentioned Facebook has that now too. Facebook is more of a circle, circular off your name. And then it's got, and it's got all these different uh, symbols next to it. Yeah. But, you know, when, when you scan in a snap code, it'll actually, you know, uh, on your phone, it'll, it'll you know, kind of like an x-ray. And it'll, it'll look like skeleton after you scan it. It's pretty cool. Um, I always like doing that. Um, but typically, you don't need to use the snap, the, the snap code. You can just use the, you know, URL or you can enter the person's name. Yeah, definitely. Well, but, you know, I would encourage you to follow us uh, on Snapchat. And you'll get some ideas on how to improve your own snap. Um, and I'm going to actually share, I don't know if I did the other day or if you did, Devani, share the video I made about a uh, Snapchat tip, oh, yeah, I'll which will help you which will help you make your videos better. It's published you'll on your it. Facebook, right? It was. Yeah, I'll share the link. One second. Finding it. Yeah, Rob has Rob has a lot of really good tips on his Facebook. You should follow him on his Facebook too, because he's always giving away. Um, he likes to hack things and give tips. A video just randomly started. There's the video. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any other questions, we're probably gonna wrap up in a couple seconds, minutes. Seconds, huh? Um. There's your wall of books. Yeah, hang on. All the here. books up on that top top, or most of them anyway. Uh, and for those who like to read, this is the book I just wrote for the doctor who loves Snapchat. It's called the Ask Doctor A book, and uh, I mean he embraces Snapchat like crazy, and all his clients um, get him on Snapchat. How do you and get a, followers on Snapchat? That's a question that Rashim just said. Well, you know, he tells everybody, you know, his book is, is based on his, uh, on his YouTube show, The Ask Dr. A Show. And on the show, which is probably about five minutes an episode, he's now up to 50 episodes, is that he, he gives people, he says, you know, follow me on Snapchat, connect your phone with my phone, and, and, you know, send me your questions. And, you know, now he's got, I think, five, 600 followers on Snapchat, right? And, uh, you know, this is the book I wrote a couple years ago that Devani liked. It's called Share, and it's all about social media. And, um, you know, now let me go back to, to, to this, to the doctor, because this book, we repurposed all the content that he created on his YouTube show and made a book out of it. Because, like we said at the very beginning, not everybody is going to be on the network that you think they are. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be on you know, YouTube or you're, they're not going to be on Facebook, you know, but with a book, he now has a tangible product that he can now go out there and give people so that they can read on a plane, on a train, anywhere that they may have not been able to get a uh, Wi-Fi signal. Now they have direct access to him through a book. Right. So, you know, with your snaps, you know, what I try to do when I make a video through Snapchat, I download all my videos. And then I can incorporate them into a longer video and share on YouTube or share on Facebook. You're repurposing what you're doing on Snap, and putting out other places. And you're telling people, for more information or for, for more of this type of content, follow me on Snapchat. Yeah. So now your followers list is getting huge and huge. And, you know, it's just getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. And that's what you want. Yep. And that is the why, how, and what of Snapchat. 
you know, there's there's other features of Snapchat. You know, you can you know put horses' faces on you. You can put you know make yourself a fairy and 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 uh, you know dogs' uh, tongues and all. That's okay. But honestly, you know, most of my followers, most of my people that look you know at my snaps, they just want the real information. They want the content. And as long as you're delivering content to people. You don't need to put on all that other extra stuff. Yeah. Now, if you're, you know, you're in a goofy mood and you're telling people, "Hey, you know, this is what I look like if I was," and you throw the filter on, you know, and and give people, you know, "Hey, you know, I, I never saw Rob in a tutu before." Right. You know, that gives them an opportunity, and I'm glad that uh, that image was only up there for 24 hours because I, I couldn't live with myself after that. But anyway. Those are things that you're going to find on Snapchat. It's a fun way to build your audience, to leverage your content, to leverage who you are. And that's what we're talking about, you know, right here on Social Leverage. Yeah, definitely. Now that is a wrap, guys. That was fun. So how did everybody like the content? You know, go in there and give us some 